Well, here's a little bit of a cool business, I think. So, shop burnt down, obviously, but we're still working. I'm working outside. I'm up here at this little business for uh, trailers. So they got custom U-bolts. So we're gonna go in here, see if we can't get some U-bolts for one of our boat trailers put together and get that fixed so we can keep hauling boats because if we can't haul boats, then we're in trouble. So this is a pretty cool place. Let's see if we can get a video of it. All right, so we're out here getting U-joints made. What do you do? Um, first, we turn on the machine. <laughs> Yeah, look at this thing. It's pretty sweet. Uh, what size what size bolt is that? The, it's a 5 by 32. Um, see this line? Yeah. It's got to be centered with the machine. With the die. Alright. What do y'all usually make? Uh, like... Who all do you make these for? Oh gosh, everyone, all crane, um, Matt, uh, really older cars, classic cars, okay. anybody, anything really. Lifts for trucks? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. 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 A lot of those, a lot of lifts. Yeah. You're not that expensive, 37 bucks for one of these, yeah. that's really not bad. Very sweet. We got one, we got a couple made so far. Yeah, so he does a lot with lifted trucks, um, old cars, and stuff like that. It's custom, custom made, so whatever length you need. So we needed 14 inches from the middle of the bin right here, all the way to the threads, and a minimum of five, five inches of threads for our trailer. And, so your name's Kelly? Yes, absolutely Kelly. Because I'm the one that always bends the U-bolts. Okay, yeah. Yes, yeah, so we got two made. We have to come back up here on Friday to get more made, but yeah, I literally called them this morning. They said, just come on in, we'll make them right now. As soon as I walked in, they were starting to make them, so definitely good customer service. It's pretty sweet. This definitely came in handy. What's up? Get your dust and moistures. Yep. So they got this crane right here. There's a suspension work at it. With U joints. It's literally all they do is U joints. So they bring them in here. They, they literally pull cranes out. You know, put jacks under them, put U joints in them, and get them back on the road. They got a whole bunch of trucks out there right now that they're working on. It's a pretty cool operation. It's like a small family type thing. Okay, so got our U joints. Got our bolts, think about everything. Pretty cool. Little did I know, and I come to find out, the uh, owner, he didn't really want to, he didn't want to be on camera, he's an older gentleman. But, he didn't want to be recorded, which is fine, but we had a pretty good conversation. He asked me what I did, what I do, and where I've been, just, you know, curious about what we do, you know, with Gentry and Sons, and here, and all that. He said, I was like, well, I just got out of the military and, you know, I've been just learning, learning the business. And he's like, oh, really? I was, I was in the army, you know, a long time ago. And I'm like, oh man, really? And he's, uh, he's been in business for over 30 years. He got out same age I did, same mentality I did, same rank, everything. And he started his business. He was sitting there. He said that. He got out because he was at that point where it's either stay in or get out and do your own thing. And he's like, if you stay in the military, then you just accept that's the military. Because you got 10 more years left. And that's pretty much what your life is going to be. So you're going to get out at 40, probably 41. And then, you know, that's, you just spent your whole beginnings of your life, you know, doing the same thing, which is fun. A lot of people retire, then you just enjoy your life for the rest of the thing. But that just wasn't what I wanted to do still isn't what I want to do. That wasn't what he wanted to do. He got out, he said he got out and he just started his own business. And, you know, he just told himself that he wasn't gonna accept anything but success. 
And what he, everything he told me really just, it just hit home for me. And it was incredible to see that exactly what I'm trying to do is, is, is achievable with the right attitude, you know? Like, don't give up, don't quit, and just don't accept anything but success. And that's what, you know, it's, it's, it's like he stared into my soul and he was like, I know you. I see it in you, and I, I feel like I can see everything that you're gonna do. And he's like, it's, he's like, you just have the attitude where if you're not doing anything, you're not challenged, then you're worthless. And I'm like, honestly, you're, you're speaking my language right now. And he's like, just don't quit. And whatever you want to do is take bull by the horns and just do it. And man, it was really weird. It's really weird how things work because I've been having like. Just not down, but like, what do I do? Thoughts in my head, like, man, what am I gonna do? Am I making the right decision and stuff like that? And then I go into this random U bolts, like U joint bolts shop, and it's like this man was sitting there waiting for me to come in there, and he just wanted to tell, like, it's like he had something to say to me, but neither one of us knew it was to me. And man, it's just like he knew exactly what I was thinking and just put everything I had to ease. Like all the all the negative thoughts I had in my head, just he just eliminated them. Just by just telling me what he went through. It's just weird how that works, how things just happen. But we're headed back to the shop. Now I'm gonna go get, um, go head back and fix this trailer. We're gonna work on it a little bit more. They didn't have all the bolts we needed, so we're not gonna be able to finish it. So I'm gonna come back on Friday. Yeah. It's just crazy the way everything works. We're here at uh, Dover's Head and Cylinder Repair Shop. That's where we get all our Detroit heads, our um, engine cylinders, all that. Yeah, basically, we, we take things and we strip them right here. We'll take the valves okay. out, we'll take the springs, and, uh, and we'll cook the cylinder head. And we run the cylinder head through a machine that blows shot across it and cleans it really good so that you're working on a clean head. That's pretty cool. Turn to this guy. Wash in a big tank for a big diesel head. And we also have a small one for gasoline application. That's pretty cool. He said that one's for diesel heads. This one's for smaller vehicles. Uh, from basic valve jobs to crack repair, overhead cam line boring. Um, you know, just pressure test them and surface them if that's all they need. But this one's getting injected to put it in the pre-chamber to put new O-rings on them. It'll be ready to go at the caterpillar. That's pretty sweet. We pressure test these heads through, uh, through a machine like this or through the old school method of just basically cutting out a template and putting a rubber gasket under it and doing it the basic old fashioned way. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I've never been to one of these shops. These things are super. This is this like is a seat guide yeah. machine. Basically, when you got to cut seats out, weld them up. Yeah, I don't know if you can see this right here, but it had a crack right here. So we'll take these two valve seats out, and then we'll take a, a die grinder and we'll grind all this out. We weld it back up. Then we'll machine it, put a brand new seat in it, pressure test it, and then we'll cut the seat three angle. That's super cool. So this is the uh, this is the type of machine that we do. Uh, look it's got a cutter bit that's about the size of my fingernail and this thing spins at a high rpm it doesn't allow the cylinder head to change temperatures at all but it does allow the surface to be cut and generally you can cut one of these things you can cut about five thousand out of lick so you know it, it does a really good job in the old days we we always surfaced them on a belt machine and of course we're in 2023 now so we don't use that and we have to <laughs> you to have a pilot and you insert the pilot which is uh, adjacent to the valve guide and when you get ready to cut the seats this has got a three angle cutter on it and the three angle cutter will spin and it'll cut the seat perfectly every time when we were growing up in school we had stones and we would cut them and try to get them all even and we're pretty close depending <laughs> on your experience but this is marked proof every one of them are identical when they get done so, you know, just 
this is a machine that comes from France and really does a good job. Yeah, it's, this one's 25 years old. And, uh, still running, huh? Still, yeah, I had to work on it a bunch, but you know, it's like <laughs> everything else. Yeah. This machine right here is also a wet broach surfacing machine. And what we do here, we'll set it up. And this has got actual stones up underneath here. And if you can, if you oh, can yeah, see that, soon. they spin at a higher RPM and then of course it got, uh, it's got antifreeze that rolls across this that keeps the temperature of the head down while you're cutting it. Because if it's bowed pretty good yeah. and you start cutting it, it's gonna warm up pretty quickly. That's so crazy. as long as you've got a wet broach rolling on it, it usually stays at a good temperature and you can get a good fresh cut. And you did. And sometimes you can keep cutting them and the hotter it gets, the more it's gonna warp. So yeah. while you're doing it, it's like, yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. What'd you do in the Navy? I worked on S3 aircraft. <laughs> I worked on air conditioning and pressurization is what I did. So now you're airport. working on cylinder heads. <laughs> I cleaned toilets for two years. <laughs> I feel you on that one. Yeah. That was about my first four years. Oh, yeah, I guarantee you. You spend time in uh, temporary assigned. Man, that Navy. looks brand new. It is brand new. <laughs> <laughs> That's our LBZ head that we're about to put on the uh, white Duramax. We changed all the studs over that it had, and whatnot. So, so that's pretty sweet. Yeah, that's be. This is not an LNY. This is an LBZ for sure. <laughs> no doubt. All right. I'll tell you what. This is another really, really, really good um, small business out in the middle of Chattanooga, Tennessee, that will do anything for you. Kind of got mixed up, and got, they ended up giving us an LOY head when we were looking for an LBZ head. But they called us and they're like, hey, we'll get you a brand new head, which they did, it's right there. And I came down here and he gave me a hundred bucks on top of the head, just for the head gasket. I told him it was too much, but he was all about it. And he said he couldn't, he, he just, he had to give it to me. So gave us some money and gave us a brand new head for our LBZ that is gonna go on the truck. Pretty freaking sweet. Um, if you're in Chattanooga or if you're not in Chattanooga and you just need your cylinder heads done, Dover Cylinder Head Service, they do a really good job. They do our Detroit heads, they do our cat heads, um, any head that needs to be surfaced, anything like that, this is what they specialize in. So it's really cool for them to do that. And they also have veterans working in there, so that's awesome. I love veteran-owned, veteran-operated businesses. Um, that It's really good. It's really cool, and they're really good people, so... If you ever out here, give them give them a shout. Jeez, I guess the neighbor's field caught on fire. It's going up towards our trailer. He's trying to stop it now. Whole field. Stop trying to help him. Y'all need help? The whole thing was on fire a minute ago. I guess the uh, paint can blew up, but they got it stopped now. It's pretty crazy. Right after our shop burned down, like right down the road. <laughs> it's not a good good week for fire on this, um, this road here. Got a hitchhiker? What's up? How you doing? What's going on over there? Uh, I guess... Tim hauling ass like it was a... Yeah, there's a paint can blew up and then it was a little fire, but they they have it, they have it handled down. Uh, where, where you headed? You over there. Where are you headed? I was just walking over to see what the hell is going on. <laughs> well, here comes fire trucks. Here they come. <laughs> this truck right here. There's nothing they can do. Oh man, he's pushing too. It's already burnt down. You're too late. <laughs> yeah, you better hurry up. It's already out. <laughs> it's been out for two days. It's already over. 
anytime a truck comes in, we always do a preventative maintenance inspection or pre-trip before the drivers do their pre-trip because the drivers will do it, but we have mechanics here for that reason. So they do their pre-trip and uh, pretty much just find anything that's wrong. On this one, this is the FLD. We came in and it had a pretty bad chafed wire or not wire, but a tube. It has a bad rubber band on it. Yeah, bad, bad rubber bands. We're gonna change the rubber band. Um, so that's what we found on that. Also, you know, alternator was loose. Just small things on an engine that you got, you're supposed to check. And we find them, we fix them. That way when they go out and they run out west, that not, they don't break down, we have to come get them. So we got Devin, he's gonna go over simple things that you're, you need to check on your pre-trip inspection for your, before a truck goes out. Go ahead. All right, so first thing is you look at the truck and check your bumper. If your bumper's got any bolts missing out of it, you can put them back in. As you can tell, bumper so that, then you're gonna come over here, you're gonna look inside these little drums and everything, you're gonna make sure there ain't no grease in it. Why would there be grease in there? Because it'll blow if it blows, it will seal. And if you do that, oil gets on your brakes, you hit the brakes, you get hot, fire. Hopefully. So you wanna look at the brakes to make sure there's no like yeah, just wet like, wet stuff on it? Yeah, like wet oil. I mean, there's obviously gonna be grease because you grease it. Yeah, you grease it, but it's grease looks different than oil. So what you're looking for is oil on the brakes, anything like any of the lines leaking, stuff like that. And then you're gonna check your belts. Obviously, these need to be changed because Dimitri Master said once, which it is true, but once this little miss, middle thing kind of goes out or it gets cut, this whole belt just goes to crap. So. If you feel this right here start to go out, then you definitely need to replace it. So we need a belt. Those belts look good. They're tight. Uh, check for any oil leaks. Look at all your lines. Make sure they're all tight. Why do you reach up and grab them like that? Because if you grab them and they break, that's not a good line. And then you check for stuff like this. Obviously, this is a coolant line coming off the, uh, the, the, the thermostat and see right here when you're running hundreds of miles and something's rubbing you'll start to cut it I don't know if you see it or not like you'll cut you see the little... oh yeah I definitely see it in there so just make sure nothing's rubbing so we're gonna have to zip tie that up and it's not a good idea it was on the manifold so we gotta fix that uh, you want to come over here and make sure that this little steering arm up here Wiggle it, make sure everything's tight. See, so there's a little slack here, and there's a little slack there, a little slack back there. No, there's no slack, it's pretty tight. You definitely want to make sure this is tight. So, if you got slack right here, then you'll probably die. We'll and check this brake, obviously. Both sides, brakes, lines. Just look for any kind of leakage anywhere. Any hose rubbing, hoses rubbing, hoses. 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 That's basically you it. Check your lights. Yeah. Obviously, if your lights are working, it's good, but you also want to come in here and make sure nothing is chafed or looks like it's about to come loose because once it wiggles, it can come loose and then you're going to lose your lights True. midway down the road. All right, what we got next? If you're doing a service, you go underneath there and you grease your drive shaft and then you push up where your U-joints are and everything. And if they're slack, then you got something wrong. Like the, uh, the little pilot bearing in there. Yeah. yeah. It could be bad, but there should not be slack, which honestly, you'll probably know that because we're going down the road, it'd be a vibration. So there's that. And then uh, you start the truck up, let it air up all the way and check if there's any leaks. There's no any leaks. Uh, airbags are still up. It's been like an hour, so there's no leaks. And you want to do like a brake test. Um, hit the brake. Like you hold it. If there's any air leaks, then you got a problem. Does that make sense? Right. One yeah. thing we done. No. Yeah. This is a leak down. Yeah. So if you hit the brakes and there is no air leaks, then you're good. But if there is, then you got a little chamber or something going on. 
but yeah just make sure your blinkers work your brights work all your marker lights and that's about just it just make sure there's no cracks on the brakes or anything too and then yeah just look at everything thoroughly when you go through it and then you usually see a problem what about so we check the oil check transmission fluid yeah got all that good and then pretty much it and then you get in here check the logs driver should always check to make sure the insurance card and all that stuff's in there here's the fld i only wanted to open this because it's beautiful but yeah that's pretty much a simple um walk through of how you do a little dot inspection because you never want to get on the road and have a belt broken or leaking oil anywhere or you find your steering bar has got slack in it Probably anything with steering like you would you would probably know you have slack but i've seen it to where the leaf springs well there's a video online where it was just sliding back and forth and that's something you definitely would you would know if you did your did a proper pre-inspection of your truck before you, you took just off looked at it, didn't see it yeah you should know yeah I, I mean i'm just truckers know not to not to leave with issues but some people just do it just to save money but Definitely should be doing your pre-trip inspections, but that's just a, a simple um, walkthrough of what you would what you would check. And this is what you find usually is if you do a good one, you reach in there, grab hoses, and look at that, then you'll find stuff like this, and you won't end up stranded on the road. So that's just a simple pre-walk, like a walkthrough of what we look at. All right, I'm gonna go get this. So All right, let's get it halfway through. Be careful, don't die. All right, safe. Well. Here we are. This is pretty much our working area for now. We don't really have, obviously, anywhere to work, but they're working on getting um, another shop, so that'll be good. See what happens in the next couple weeks. This is a, this is my six, seven dot, or four. Four duh, four duh. Fluid injector. So, I'm gonna be Pulling the injectors out of this thing probably next week. And then I've never done it, so I don't know how difficult it's going to be, but I think it'll, I mean, pr pretty much just one bolt at a time. Um, you know, you just put everything, take everything apart. And when you put it, take it apart, you just lay it out the way it can't, came off and you put it back on the same way and then everything goes smooth. But I've never taken a six, seven apart. It just looks like a bunch on top of this motor. So it's a little intimidating, but I think I can do it. So I'm gonna pull this to my house, put it in my little shed garage thing. And then I'll probably be working on this. And then once I get this done, um, I'm gonna move to this. This is dad's six, seven Dodge. Same thing happened to it. Um, See if I can figure out how to open this thing. Same thing happened to it. That back piston back there decided to explode. Injector dropped. Bent a rod. Um, the injector st stayed open, and then it locked the whole motor down. I mean, it was super, super gnarly. We thought it was just an injector, but it actually blew the piston up too. So. Uh, we're gonna tear this thing apart next. I guess I'm just gonna be on projects for the next couple weeks. I have the garage at my house, so gotta do something. So I guess this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna pull this motor out. I think it'll be pretty fun, actually. I really like pulling motors out. So, strip the turbo, get everything out of the way, disconnect the motor mounts, and pull it out. Should be pretty easy. I don't know, but gives me something to do because right now all we're doing is picking up boats which is fine i'm just kind of bored and there's trucks to be worked on if i can get this one done then i can sell it or give it away or i don't know crash it into a tree something but it'll be f it's a really fun truck it's already deleted and tuned so these six sevens are actually pretty stout so i can have fun with it and then, I actually think Timmy said this thing is going to go on the road soon. 
this truck is just this is probably the coolest truck ever i love this truck if i could drive this myself i definitely would like this is probably my favorite thing that we own or timmy owns i'm just here but yeah this thing it's fast it sounds mean it looks mean and it's just a classic it's super sweet but kind of a slow week here obviously for obvious reasons but we're still getting stuff done still pulling boats and still having fun so there's poppy well been a pretty good pretty good week despite you know all the everything that's been going on um obviously been a pretty tough week we've been doing pretty much just what we can with what we got obviously since there is no shop anymore we've been working outside and just getting what we can done i think it's uh really cool to see the whole community come together you know the trucking community the local community and everyone just with their outpouring of uh, you know just support and sending tools and sending their love and their prayers and everything like that you know like our family really appreciates it appreciates it and you know we're doing what we can with what we have and we're still getting made in some which is really cool um with all the time kind of we have since we can't really do most of our tools are gone i was able to go to a couple of the local businesses that we we use for a lot of our parts and ask them you know like what do they do and how they do it and you know just show like a little bit of different side of the trucking world because you know it's not always running trucks it's, it's a lot of times it's the small things that break like u-bolts on the trailer you know stuff like that and they're if you don't want to pay big money for them you just got to get them made and luckily we have some shops around here that do that and then um our cylinder heads for our detroits and our cats and stuff like that we have a shop in chattanooga which is like an hour away that we have that um that helps us with that and you know we we get our heads done by then um both of those businesses are actually better known which i didn't know at the time but when I went down there, I started talking to the employees, and yeah, actually the the owner of the U -bolt, U bolt shop is he's an old army vet. He was in Panama. Uh, he was he was active duty for ten years, and then he got out and started his own business. And thirty years later, he's still running his own business, which is really cool. And then the um, the owner of the cylinder head shop. The man I was talking to today is he's ex Navy, and I think he just did four years, and then he got out, and, you know, kind of did his own thing, which is which is normal. Um, a lot of people just do one enlistment, then they get out. The only reason I did two is because I got offered a really good opportunity, and also I got a surprise pregnancy for my wife, so I was like, I didn't know what I was gonna do, so I was like, you know, I'll just re-enlist. I'll do one more term. And, see where i'm at from there which is led me to where i am now so i can't really complain um yeah i just want to say thank you to everyone that you know reached out and you know, has been helping us that's really it's really incredible to see what a community can, can do together um i know timmy thanks th i've already th thanked everyone and you know just showed the shop carnage i'll just add a um a little link to that at the end of my video so you can see that it's it's pretty gnarly he has a really good detailed video of what happened so you can go to his channel and check it out um you can see the fire video like see how the fire happened and when it happened and all that and then you can see the actual aftermath of it he shows that on there as well so go over his channel check it out it's gentry and sunstrucking obviously if you don't know but yeah check it out it's pretty gnarly so you know if you're if you cry easily be prepared because it's it's someone losing their entire business and it's it's pretty rough when i watched it for the first time i was like geez dude like that's my brother and you know just watching a shop that we've been in for like 25 years go down in flames was really it, it was hard to watch and it, it was rough but you know from the ashes rises something better so we'll see where we go from here and i think it'll be i think it'll end up being better than where, where we started so maybe it's a blessing in disguise it's a really expensive one but maybe it's a blessing and we'll see what happens but i hope you
hope you enjoy this video. Hopefully there's more to come and yeah, thanks for watching.